Hi, I'm Nina and welcome to The Non-Essential Project. All right, Nina. Oh. So, what is your occupation? I call myself a bit of a slashy. I'm a photographer, passionate cook. I am a community arts worker. I owned a gallery, Studio 19, and ran an art space and a performance space. I'm a gardener. I can, I can be anything you want me to be, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like being in the same thing and being stuck in the same position. I get a little bit bored. So. Routines, not your... Nah. Nah. How long have you been being a slashy? <laughs> I, you know, I guess I, when I moved to Wollongong about, oh, about 15 years ago, I got the opportunity to go to art school. I thought I'd always had this passion for photography. So I followed it. I met other artists down here and they sort of said, oh, why don't you go to Wollongong West Tafe? And it's a fantastic decision because I met my community, you know. Well, I grew up in Sydney, was a big Sydney girl. I went travelling um, and then I was living on Lord Howe Island for about a year. A lifestyle change and island change. And then I came back to the Big Smoke and I, um, I didn't like it. And I had a friend who lived in Otford. Beautiful little house in the trees, came up for rent. And I, yeah, did, straight away I thought I'm going to take that up. Growing up, I think my dad had a big passion for photography or you always had cameras mm. um I've got one of his really old cameras I remember and every time that we would go out anywhere he, he was taking photos and I suppose I followed in his footsteps in a way and do you play an instrument I play the drums <laughs> and I also play trombone oh do um, you because so I play with a group called the Femme Fatales I didn't know you played the trombone <laughs> I'm a natural what can I say <laughs> What do you love about your job? Since COVID, my job has changed a little. I am now doing food tours and cooking classes with my business, Nina Cantina. So photography has been pushed aside a little bit and it's been going really well. And I really love, I love it because I love, you know, talking to people and I love food and I love travel and I love creating experiences. And so that, I guess that's my other dream job as well. So yeah. Mm. Okay. Yes. Next. Ne next. <laughs> Uh, what is your most memorable experience performing your job? Working um, with Anne-Louise Rental at The Vault. I was the resident photographer. So you just don't know what you're going to get. And I have witnessed some amazing acts. I think one of the skills that I've had to have as a photographer was to be kind of ready for anything. Obscure moments and just really raw moments. And yeah, it was just beautiful. I really enjoyed that. So yeah. What other jobs have you had that like aren't in the industry? Did you have jobs when you were younger? Oof. Mate. <laughs> so I grew up in mum and dad's takeaway, takeaway shops. So I've been working for a very long time, since I was probably about 10, you know. And then after school, I went into hospitality, worked um, as a chef and waiter. What key experiences would you say have shaped you into the person that you are? Isidro Blasco, his name is. And I saw it in Sydney and I loved his work. And I contacted him and I said, I really love your work. I saw your work in Sydney. And he wrote back and we started writing to one another. And then he was looking for an assistant. It was kind of like over Christmas. I had some time. I thought I could do that job. And mm. a friend of mine's like, you should ask him. And so I asked him. And then a couple of months later, I was in New York. You know, he was an artist living in New York in Queens. He's got two kids. He had a studio in Brooklyn. I was basically you know, a slave for three months, but it was great. It was a really great experience. I got to see so much art, a broadening experience to see how real artists survive in New York as well. Mm. And also there's definitely a dark side to it as well. I also decided uh, not to come home and go to South America for five months. So I continued my travels, ended up living in Argentina for three months. I worked in a gallery there. Kind of seeing, I love seeing how other people live and one of my other favourite things about photography is documentary mm. and street photography. So it's kind of been hard with COVID because I'm like, I haven't been able to sort of get that. Do your travelling. Do my travelling. But definitely travel and photography. And oh yeah, that experience for me was was amazing, transformed. Hmm. And full, did you feel like? Yeah. Well, that's what kind of inspired me to do my rig roller derby project with the local Illawarra roller derby team. So that's the word team. And so that turned out to be a fantastic project for me because it launched my photography. So I was approached by Sean O'Brien for the ABC and he'd heard about the project. Yeah. Um, and he helped me sort of make a little slideshow about one of the girls that was in the team. And that turned out to be the launch for their ABC Open series that was online, on television, 
in the newspaper. It was fantastic. So it really just gave me a lot of like a lot of confidence to sort of keep practicing what I was doing and gave me a, a good name and mm. yeah, it was great. So That's it was so cool. Really I didn't good. know that. Yeah. <laughs> who do you depend upon in your life and who are you closest to? <sighs> I would say my family and especially my um my sister Debbie. She's a rock for me. And my beautiful friends. So I have a, a beautiful bunch of friends here in um, Wollongong that I just love and they support me. And especially the community, just so supportive. You know, it's, been, it's a beautiful place to live for that reason. Yeah. Okay, so now we're talking about the pandemic, all right? All right. When... <laughs> <laughs> so when the pandemic hit, how did that change your life? Um, when the pandemic hit, I just finished a really big exhibition with the Women's Information Service with Gathering Ground, and we had this m massive exhibition at the town hall. That big project, that big contract's just finished. What am I doing next? Mm. It was pretty terrifying, actually, to be honest with you, because I was like, day by day, it's, people started cancelling. Oh, cancelling yeah. this, cancelling that's being cancelled. This we can't do that. We can't do this. And I was just like, oh my god, what am I going to do? You know, like. So I rang my sisters and they were like, don't freak out, you know, just, you've got to just go on the dole. And I'm like, I don't want to be on the dole again. Like, I've done that. I don't want, I'm not doing it again. They're like, you just have to do it. Not knowing what was happening was really hard for me and not knowing like what the future was holding was, you know, and feeling trapped and feeling all those feelings was really hard. So, yeah. cause I live alone. I live on my own. I love hugging people. I love talking to people. So it was, yeah, it was pretty hard. Yeah. Mm. What drives you to keep going when things get hard? Knowing that there are other people like me in my situation that I'm surrounded by those people, you know, there's lots of artists, which is great because you want to feel like you're part of something bigger. If you're not doing like a normal job and, you know, and I haven't got kids and I, you know, haven't got, you know, you feel like, oh, am I doing the right thing here? You always feel like a little bit of an outsider. Mm. You know? So you can take risks because you've got a supportive community yeah, around the, you. The safety net. Yeah. What advice would you give your younger self? Oh, I don't know. Like probably like the, the responsible answer would be like save more money or like, or, like you know, <laughs> when your parents said, oh, we'll help you put a deposit on a house, say yes. <laughs> Instead of saying, no, I don't want that. That means I don't want to be tied down. But you know what I mean? But I don't, It's hard to say. I would say probably look after your health a bit better. Don't worry so much about what everybody thinks. Because mm. mm. a lot of people are just thinking about themselves. <laughs> Right. That's what you realise when you get older, don't you? You go, actually, everyone has got their own shit going on. Nobody really gives a shit, you know? Well, they do, but like most people are actually just thinking about themselves. So just yeah. relax and enjoy yourself and be more confident as well, you know, and own it. What are you excited about for the future? Hmm. So I'm going to build a tiny house. So I've got a great friend in the community has offered me a space on their property. So great. Thanks, Thanks, guys. I'm not going to say your name, but thank you. Yeah, That's so cool. Yeah, well, if you need help. I know where you, I know where you <laughs> go. Okay, the last one. So this is the word association oh, game. So you just go. say the first, <laughs> the first thing that pops into your head. You ready? Yeah. Pandemic. Sucks. Essential. Work. Community. Love. Chores. Suck. <laughs> the year ahead. Exciting. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Nisha. Okay, thanks everybody. See you later. Bye. 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 Where did that fly come from? <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> You're gonna have some great outtakes of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking fly. <laughs> <laughs>